All right, everybody, let's get into this. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to move this over here for the moment. Yeah, I'm going to move this over here. Yep. All right. 3.4 notes. Here we go. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, give me reasons why we should uh, conserve biodiversity. That's, of course, after you wrote conservation of biodiversity. Why is um, Why should we conserve biodiversity? You know, biodiversity is with plants and animals, by the way. So if you're having a tough time choosing your thinking, hey, it might help you out some. Give me reasons why we should not conserve biodiversity. Uh, Darwinism might be a good reason. Survival of the fittest. If you can't keep up, why am I going to waste energy trying to keep you along? Uh, Tell me your thoughts about do humans need other species? In what ways? Um, Yeah. I don't like hamburgers, not going to lie, when hamburgers don't grow on trees. Uh, Do other species exist for human use? Do they exist solely for human use? You know, different thoughts. Do other species have a right to exist? Does a great ape have more rights than a mosquito does? Uh, Do we have the ultimate rights just because we are the ultimate species, according to us? All right, you can go different places with that. Think about that next time you're about to wear leather, fur, or eat meat, or um, other things. Are your reasons based on rational thoughts or emotion or both? Does this affect how valid they are? So I tend to be more logic-brained. I've got one of my best buddies. He tends to be more emotional, all right? Um, You know, just... Nothing's right. Nothing's wrong. It's just the way it is. All right. Uh, concept of conservation is new. It hasn't been around all that long. Um, but look at national parks. Uh, let's go down here for a second. You know, um, when were, oh, by the way, I should probably put this on focus just so I don't have, um, we're going to go work for one hour. Ah, yeah. That way no one's getting through. All right. When were national parks created? Bang. All right. Ah, 1872. So it's been like a little bit over 150 years, maybe, for conservation. That's just national parks, by the way. Uh, Central concepts. Diversity and complexity are good things. Untimely extinction is bad. So think about this. If somebody is going to, something or a plant is going to die before it's time, that's not a good thing. All right. Especially if like humanity is usually the reason why we kind of push it along. All right. Um, evolution adaptation is good though. Survival of the fittest. Darwinism brings out the best. It's kind of a commercialism kind of thought of you if you're into uh, politics too, but just whatnot. Biological diversity has intrinsic value. So um, just having different animals, just for the sake of different, has a certain value to it. That's basically what this sentence right here just says. Um, That right there. Yep. All right. Um, Got a whole lot of abbreviations down here. Uh, Hey, look, if you're taking the IB exam, I've started uh, telling my students this. IB loves like beating you up with abbreviations. Beat them up a little bit back on some of your answers. Start dropping these terms. See if they actually know about them. Hey, they're the ones using them. They should, right? Uh, UN, United Nations. UNEP, United Nations Environmental Program. Oh, by the way, everybody knows who the UN is. So if they don't know who that one is, better ask somebody. All right. Sites. Um Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Like basically just making sure none of those dirty, rotten poachers and other people out there are trading like, you know, endangered species, animal and plant. UNDP, United Nations Developmental Program, uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF. WWF is a big one, by the way. Uh, you see stickers for it all the time in windshields of cars. WRI, World Resource Institute. Non-GO, non-government organization. They love this in IB. So, um, yeah, definitely be throwing this one down. 
is that organization not tied to our government? I don't believe the WWF is. So that's, I think the WWF is an NGO. GEO is a government organization like the EPA in the United States, Environmental Protection Agency. MDG, Millennial Development Goals. Cool, all right. Why conserve biodiversity? The value of biodiversity. There's direct, all right. Um, what we get just straight up from, you know, having multiples of plants and animals. Food sources is a big one. I don't know about you, but I need to eat to live. So we eat a small number of foods, but each of those foods has different varieties. When you eat chicken, there's different types of chicken out there. All right. I got one student who absolutely loves birds. Um, just ask them. All right. We will probably need old varieties in the future. It's weird, but especially from talking to somebody here who like looks like he's a Santa Claus, you know, in the mall in the off season, um, it's old and grizzled. Sometimes that old technology, like it goes away and then we need it again. Um, I cook with cast iron skillets. Look, it's old school. It's, you know, you lose a bit of oil and it's nonstick and it's actually better for you than Teflon, I think. So, you know, hey, people can have their own opinions. We will probably, um, pest plus disease can wipe out a crop, all right? Um, yep, talk about the uh, American chestnut blight down here. Right now, we're having trouble in the Northeast with ash bores, all right? So ash bore right here, uh, ash bore. Oh yeah, emerald ash bore, yep, that little guy right there um ash borer Derp. this guy there yep emerald ash borer they basically eat all like our ash trees ash tree you can tell ash trees they've got these leaves that are kind of arrow shaped also their bark is arrow shaped too it's just diamond shaped um that's how you can tell an ash tree usually if you look up at the top Right now, unfortunately, in Connecticut, it's probably dead. So uh, we need wild strains and genes so breeders can stay ahead of diseases. Another reason why we need biodiversity. Uh, both wheat and corn had diseases that needed wild varieties that had genes that were disease resistant. So, yeah, man. All right. Try to get rid of the old school stuff. Try to do better than God's work. And guess what? Eventually, you got to come back to the drawing board. You need a little bit of God's work. All right. What is your favorite type of apple? By the way, apples have been um, bioengineered for thousands of years. Don't think, don't believe the, well, organic label is great and whatnot for chemicals and whatnot, but don't fool yourself. It ain't wild. So tell me about the American chestnut blight. All right. Yep. Do that one too. Cool thing is they're actually um, planting these ones again from gene banks, I believe. Uh, natural products, many medicines, pesticides, fertilizers come from plants plus animals. Uh, guano is fertilizer from seabird poop. I think it might actually be bat poop too. Uh, let's take a look down here. Uh, good old Google. What is bat poop called? Guano. Hey, you know, if it's ever on Jeopardy, you're welcome. Give me a cut. So rubber, cotton, linen, rope, rattan, perfumes, timber, all come from plants. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Right now, Ukraine has rich soil. It's too bad they got a war going on. Africa is rich in rare minerals. Middle East is rich in oil. These products can make these areas rich. So natural resources. Here in the United States, we have quite a few natural resources. We have salmon. All right, we have some cod, although we overfished it. Um, yeah, we have a pretty nice timber industry. All right, um, we've got big time rivers. We've got the plains. I mean, we got a little bit of everything. Everyone thinks America is a big country. It's decent sized, but really we pack quite a bit in of really cool stuff. So, all right, indirect environmental services. Uh, soil aeration. From worms. Yep, without worms, guess what? Your soil is going to be pretty dry, pretty stagnant, 
no air going through it. Not over that fertile. Yep. Pollination from bees. Oh, right now we have a big problem with bees dying. Um, honeybees. Yeah, we need them. All right. Without them, do you imagine what they have to do to go around to all the little fruit to pollinate them? Me and you with like a Q-tip. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Actually, that would be a good thing to do if students were in um, ISS, you know, but we'd have a lot more people. We'd have to have a lot of people in ISS, and that's not good. Um, trees lock up carbon and release oxygen. So, yep, that's intrinsic value right there. Hey, you want to make up part of me wonders like um, how much carbon is emitted from an airplane flight from NYC to LA. Ha ha. Um, a good po point of reference is that a cross country airplane to New York City and, and then back to New York City would emit 0.622 uh, tons of carbon dioxide percent trip in the average um, vehicle gets, oh, uh, uh, whatever. Um, Oh, so according to this, um, airplane flight is actually better for you than car travel to New York, from New York City to L.A. Huh, who thunk? All right. Um, how many trees does it take to offset 0 0.62 tons of of carbon haha -ha. all right uh this way we take one yeah all right well it's not gonna oh let's see this how much uh carbon does one acre a tree hey so actually if you planted about an acre of trees it would make up for uh, roughly about four people flying. Um, minimal. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, yeah, back to this. Roots slow down soil erosion and reduce water runoff. Um, that's why if you have a like a bank in your yard or something, you want to plant trees there or brush something that's got roots that hold the soil there. Otherwise, the whole hill is just going to slide down. Decomposers break down waste. So, um, yeah, bacteria do, insects do, different things, whether it's cow poop, human poop, uh, vegetable debris, fruit debris, compost, you name it. Scientific and educational value. Ooh, yes. Okay. A admit it. If you, when you see a fly eating plant, it's pretty freaking cool. Biological control agents. Yep. Uh, gene pools. Wild animals plus plants mean uh, more diverse uh, genetic. So, yep. Uh, future potential for even more uses. Animals plus plants are early indicators of things. Um, what I mean by that is like, look, if you see all the trees dying on the side of the highway, it's, wow, I wonder why. Um, that could indicate there's a problem there. Oh my gosh. If there's a problem it's causing the trees to die, what do you think is going to happen to the cancer rate of the houses right by the trees? All right, just saying. Um, human health, antibiotics come from fungi. Oh, yeah. If you ever want to see how antibiotics started, that's a cool story down here. All right. Um, how were antibiotics? discovered bang all right uh and fleming returned from a holiday that might grow in future dishes staphylococcus bacteria so um basically how was penicillin developed penicillin really helped out when world war ii keep soldiers from dying all right yeah when they give you lemons make lemonade world war ii sucked but hey you know penicillin was really good to help save some lives there so um back to this uh, Eutoxis in Pacific Northwest recently found to treat cancer. Cool beans. Uh, Rosie Periwinkle, besides being a fun name to say, helps kids with leukemia in Madagascar. All right. Um, that's where it's been found, I believe. Human rights. Indigenous people continue to live 
on their lands. Um, it's got value to it, just knowing land that your ancestor came from, all right, where your family's from. Even if you have pride in your roots, even if your family, you're like, hey, they're from New Jersey or um, from Cornwall, England. They're from Jamaica. They're from Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, wherever, okay? Um, recreational, peeps vacation, visit beautiful areas. I know I do, and then they spend money, you know? So, yeah, it's got value that way for tourism. Um, and that's a good thing because those people want to keep the area clean. Just everything in moderation. Too many tourists tend to destroy an area too. So ecotourism, biodiversity has a beauty to it. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, just does. So you, if you're going down to a forest, you probably want to see more than one type of tree or animal. Ethical intrinsic value, uh, right to life. So, yep. You know, things have a right to live. Bio rights, self-perpetuation. Um, species uh, help other species survive. Ooh, that is actually true for that one. Nature hates a void and it loves like just biodiversity for lack of a better term. Um, it loves creating. It loves watching things go chaos and just out. So think of a beautiful place you've seen. Where was it? Was it made by mankind or God? Nature, depending on what you believe on. So just answer me that. I talked with a patient once about this. It's really kind of a deep thought. You know, don't tell anyone who teaches theory of knowledge. Conservation and preservation of biodiversity. Conservation and preservation have similar but are different. So conservation allows humans into reserves. So sustainable hunting, harvesting. Nature can provide income for people. So conservation is this. Conservation is, it's green, but it's got to be green. You know, we got to make that land kind of pay for itself. Um, this isn't so bad, too. There's, um, like, watch this down here. Uh, ridge, uh, if only I could spell ridge. Ridge line collective, I think, Vermont. Um, Ridgeline Outdoor Collective. Yeah, so like, I guess these guys do backcountry skiing, mountain biking. I think they got horse trails. I think skiing and like mountain biking are their big ones. So anyway, um, support trails. All right, Rochester Valley Trails. Oh yeah, there they are. Okay. Um, Anyway, so these hippies, like what they did was off in the cent uh, center of Vermont, was they're like, hey, look, we're surrounded by a whole lot of towns. I'm sorry, by a national forest on either side. And yeah, we kind of don't got a whole lot going on economically. We're talking on five generations of just kind of going like that. And they're like, you know what? How do we get people to come to an area? How do we get young families to stay? How do we get jobs and stuff, income coming in? And the way was they basically petitioned National Forest so they can start building mountain bike trails. I think they got some horseback riding trails too. And, um, you know, like some other stuff. And, um, yeah, they were like mountain biking, skiing, I guess, horseback riding. And then the amount of tax revenue they get, because, you know, when you visit a place, you got to get gas or fuel up. You got to get like, buy some beverages. Okay. You're going to buy food. Maybe something breaks and you have to get it fixed before you know it. You've actually dropped a little bit of money there and the revenue from it is rather nice. Um, and it's just friendly too. So yeah, I can speak very highly about community-based efforts like that. All right. Back to this, um, conservation. Yep. Uh, conserve the land because it's going to make you money. Preservation. Nature has its value regardless of human needs. So it doesn't matter what you want. doesn't matter what you get from it. It has value. All right. I don't care if it's a rock. It's got value. All right. All life matters. That is not a take a, a dig on anything political like Black Lives Matter or Blue Lives Matter or anything like that. All right. It's just preservation. Preserv preservationists are like all lives matter. 
All right. All life matters. All right. Do you believe more in conservation or preservation and why? Most people find conservation more likable. They get something from it. You know, people like um, doing what they what they believe on. Um, let's see. I think I just heard a Napoleon. Napoleon quote. Um, humanity. Um, all right. Um, the human race is governed by its imagination. I heard something else. It was something about like, basically mankind can be controlled by, um, basically fear or profit, you know, or better life. So that's what moves people. All right. Um, Investing in climate change mitigation now will produce long-term financial benefits. So talk about stocks. There's quick hit stocks or like, you know, quick hit money schemes where it's like, all right, a little bit in and boom. All right. High risk though. Um, they talk about this with like, you know, investing in climate change will have an effect long-term, long, steady um, profitability, which Looking at my age, I'm mid forties. Long term profit is more my style right now. All right, I'm more uh, financially conservative, I guess. But you know, um, I like it. You know. Anyway, do you believe one person can make a difference to the climate environment? How? All right. I saw a shirt that said that once about COVID. If you don't think one person can change the whole you know world think about the first person who got COVID, and i was like oh that's horrible but kind of correct sustainable development equals meeting present needs without messing up the future needs so yeah um getting what you need now without messing up your long-term life so you have to fix that down the road national forest logging yep uh that's a good example there's a bad way to do it and a good way taking a few trees you know like allows the young trees to grow up all right uh nature hates a void greenwash equals being fake green all right um portraying yourself or business as green just for the money but not following through yep how conservation organizations work igos geos and ngos remember ngos are non-government organizations can be local or global IGOs are intergovernmental organizations. They're made up of different countries. International organizations, UN, IPCC. So, yep, those are your IGOs, international, baby. All right. Uh, GOs are government organizations, part of a governmental, uh, very political EPA. EPA has got a lot of power. I'm going to tell you, you do not want to mess with the EPA. If they find trouble with you, ooh. There's bills and fines to pay. All right. Um, Environmental Protection Department of China. Hmm. I don't live in China. I don't know much about this. Okay. But um, I don't think I'd want to run into trouble. All right. NGOs, non government organizations, not part of a government, nonprofit, mostly volunteer, friends of the earth, Greenpeace. But the thing is, if they're doing it for volunteer basis, they're true believers. Got to be careful about those true believers, man. They do it not for the money, for the love. Yep, you got to copy this table down. Now, luckily, I'm going to make this big for you so you can really cook on it. But um, this is comparing IGOs and GEOs to NGOs. Use of the media. And IGOs and GEOs has one media person department that puts out one message. Yep, we're all get behind that one message. All right. Here at school, I think you could probably say we're an NGO. Um, we don't differ too much on how we want things done. We're like, okay, our government, our thing is we recycle cardboard at school. And unfortunately, that's about it. All right. Um, one message that is effective. All right. NGOs uses a video footy to get attention. Protests, which are caught on media, then push as government um, issues. Protests in different legal, illegal ways. Guess what? Uses social media, all right? NGOs all the time. So, yep, speed of response. IGO and GOs, very slow. All right, we're going to put this to committee. We're going to see about it because it's democratic, all right? It takes time. Can't, nothing can be rushed. K 
can be against public opinion. All right. But it's not it's not the popular thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Speed of response for NGOs is fast. Like, look, man, this hit. This is bad. Do something now. All right. Because you members usually have the same thought pattern. So uh, political diplomatic constraints very constrained you got like in our system in the united states you got two parties that kind of i feel like sometimes don't care about the issue but they do care about fighting against the other party um uh, politics and international leads to different needs wants so decisions can be based off politics instead of the environment which is kind of sad um these guys no political constraints because if you signed up for it you pretty much knew what you're getting into Sometimes have extreme views, often care about environment over all else. Yep. Basically, when you ask me about my politics, um, you know, I care about the environment first. All right. That's what gets my vote. The economy, what, you know, is down the list. So, yeah. Enforceability can make laws ability for prosecution. Yeah. All right. You will do this or this will happen. Uh, Unfortunately for NGOs, there's no legal power, only social pressure. Social pressure could be quite a bit, though. Think about back when COVID hit, lockdown in the United States. Yeah, there was some prosecution, but really when you really think about it, it was social pressure. You know, just saying. uh, Public image, organized with people in specific roles. Um, yep, you're the president, you're the treasurer, you in class, you're the students, I'm the teacher. Yep, that's our titles. All right, professional public image that is politically correct. I got a beard, all right? I'm a science teacher. Um, I guess that's professional enough and fits with the thing, with the image, all right? Um, public image can be confrontational or radical. So, yep. They're putting on a display. They are looking for attention. They will do things to get attention. Results are more important than image. Yeah. So legislation has ability to legislate, make laws. Um, that's if you're IGO, GEOs. Uh, NGOs has sued governments for breaking laws. Hey, you know, so we do get a little bit of legislation in there. Um, not sure how effective that is, but hey, it's possible. Agenda, makes guidelines, treaties. Agenda over here uses public pressure to influence governments. Yeah, because it's your government until they're overthrown. And that is not anything anybody wants. So buy and manage land, which is pretty cool. Um, Sometimes the government has them manage the land for them. Their funding, NGOs, is from private donations. Um, Yeah, all right. Wonder how it, uh, difficult it is to track those, but yeah. Um, IGOs and GEOs, government taxes, yep. Extent of influence geographically. They have a national and global um, extent of influence. More local or national. Although with social media, man, I mean, like I'd say that you could even put international in there. Make an argument for me. It might be a cool IA, maybe if you can prove it or something. Monitoring activities, regional uh, plus global trends, species plus conservation areas. So, yeah, that's what we got. All righty. You got that pretty good. I got to probably minimize this screen here. Like that. And then we'll go down here. Good. All right. The good news. International Convention on Biodiversity. World is more uh, democratic than authoritarian right now. Although, guess what? Those I'm right now talking about, like while we're having a war with Russia and Ukraine. So authoritarians can be a little bit um, pushing back right now. So, and the information age holds people accountable. So, yep, you can have a public image right now. So, United Nations is formed up. UNEP uh, set up the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. And the Montreal Protocol is paying off by reducing CFCs. This is a favorite of theirs to uh, talk about. Remember, the CFCs come from like hairspray cans, you know, refrigerant, air conditioning. 
that sort of stuff. NGOs are now larger, are large after starting small. So yeah, you start off mom and pop operation, you know, bootstrap, and then they can get pretty big like the WWF. So especially now with social media, just got to go viral. People now vote with the environment on their mind. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Um, when I buy stuff, that's what it's on my mind, you know? So timeline of key dates for biodiversity conservation. Let's get all these up there right there. So I'm just not going to lie. It's kind of like a list. We're just going to power through. 1961, WWF set up by the U, U, IUCN uh, and Julian Huxley. 1966, Species Survival Commission, published by Red Data List. 1973, Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora. Okay, cool. So we're not up to animals yet, but hey, we got it on plants. Not going to be trading any of those like endangered tiger lilies, I hope. Yeah. All right. 1980, World Conservation Strategy. 1980, Brandt Commission published Beginnings of Sustainable Development. 1982, the UN, United Nations, World Charter for Nature. 1987, let's see if I can get this one right. Brantland Commission on Our Common Future. First defined, uh, sus defined sustainable development. Cool. I'll have to see what that is because for me, sustainable, even though I do go environment. Got to be sustainable. Call me a preservationist. No, conservationist. Haha. -ha. All right. Um, 1991, Caring for the Earth, Strategy for Sustainable Living. 1992, Agenda 21, Convention on Biological Diversity, CBD. Ooh, cool. Biodiversity Action Plan, BAP, or Global Biodiversity Strategy. Why that doesn't get an acronym? I don't know. GBS sounds pretty good to me. Uh, 2000 UN Millennial Summit and the MDGs Millennial Development Goals. Those actually, if I was to drop something on an IB exam, that might be a cool thing to drop. Oh, get rid of that. Uh, 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development. Yeah. 2005 World Summit. 2010 International Year of Biodiversity. I don't know, man. Great. Everyone gets a trophy title, you know. Um, Rio plus 20, you know, 2012. All right, now we're getting down here. The World Conservation Strategy, WCS, and subsequent milestones. WCS is a united approach to conservation. Maintains necessary ecological and life systems, preserve genetic diversity, sustainable use of species and ecosystems. How much of this is really held up, though, and accountable? That's kind of what I'm wondering about. Um, 1982, UN World Charter. Nature shall be respected and its essential processes shall not be impaired. Easy to say, harder in practice. The genetic viability of the earth shall not be compromised. Easy to say, hard to practice. All areas of the earth, both land and sea, shall be subject to these principles of conservation again ecosystems and organisms that are utilized by man shall be managed okay that's actually a good one all right if we've got a vested interest in it yeah i'm gonna say we should manage it because we just to make sure we don't mess it up we have a bad habit of that nature shall be secured against degradation caused by warfare or other hostile activities Not good, man. Yeah, we're still ha like war is wasted effort. We wasted resources. Name a war that has occurred since 1982 and how it has degraded nature. Cool. All right, I'll help you out down here. Uh, wars since 1982. Bang. Oh, um, oh well, I thought Google's actually going to hook me up with this, but all right. Um, yeah, Lebanon war. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, this is just 89. All right. Ooh, damn. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet Lord. Oh yeah. The Falkland wars, 1982. Forgot about that. <laughs> so the UN world charter and the Falkland wars are going on. Brilliant. All right. 
Falkland Wars is where like between Argentina and, and the UK. Oh, all right. In 1991, caring for Earth, strategy for sustainable living was updated. Uh, stated benefits to sustainable use of na natural resources. Stated benefits of sharing resources. 1992, Rio Earth Summit. Global diverse biodiversity strategy equals goal equals help countries integrate biodiversities into their planning. Some countries did this more than others. Uh, conservation of biological variation. Yep. It just goes different. Doesn't mean it's bad. We would like to conserve it. All right. Sustainable use of its components. Equitable sharing of benefits from genetic resources. Ooh, that's a touchy one. Okay. What is equitable? All right. If you've got a really rare tiger in your country, all right, is it sharing it to another zoo, equitable, like genes, crossbreeding, you know, LEDCs versus MEDCs, what's equitable? Um, Agenda 21 intended to involve action at different government levels. Uh, the 2000, the UN Millennium Summit, Millennial Development Goals, MDGs, again, hitting up on those. Um, you know, like, drop that one in, you know, an answer on an IB exam, probably going to do pretty good. Measurable goals with a set time to combat poverty, hunger, disease, illiteracy, environmental degradation, and discrimination. So, yeah, let me just put it right there. Uh, 2002, the Johannesburg Summit, the idea of consolidating the Rio Earth Summit, little work was actually done though. You know, it's like some of these, it's just a great conference. People get together, people have a few meals and what, what do you got to show for it at the end? 2005, World Summit, New York, uh, made priorities to address, recommended each country come up with a strategy for the conservation of natural resources, integrates conservation with development so yep it's the difference between conservation and preservation conservation but with development 2010 biodiversity target european union attempted to halt biodiversity decline this failed yep still dropping like my mixtape man you know it's just all right um tried didn't work 2013 rio 20 Goal of making a more sustainable green environment. So, yep. All right. Let's talk here. Um, um, approaches to conservation. Species-based conservation. Let me see what I can do to minimize this. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, Species-based conservation sites. This uh, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of w Wild Fauna and Flora. Countries voluntarily sign up, then make their own laws to enforce shutting down international trade of animals and plants. So look, you volunteer to sign up for this, but then you're going after your own bad guys. It's actually worked rather well. Um, you know, um, Appendix 1, species can't be traded internationally because of the extinction threat. Yep. You can't trade this. It's in our country. All right. Or you can't trade in this if it's in another country. Species, Appendix 2, species can be traded internationally with strict regulations set by the country. Appendix 3, species included because of country requests but needs help from other countries to prevent illegal exploitation. Hey, look, man, we're trying to stop you know, poaching of elephant tusk, but literally your people keep buying them. Could you help me out here? All right. Boom. That's what's going on. And you've seen a lot of like international cooperation with this and yeah, man, you're hitting the bad guys. It's, you know, really easy to identify them really and really easy to identify. Yeah, that's bad. Let's get them. So captive breeding in zoos. Ooh, okay. This is helpful. Even though zoos have a bad reputation. Difficult reintroducing to the wild if already wiped out of its native habitat. So it really helps if you still have like a pocket community in that habitat and that you can just reintroduce from the zoo, like, you know, pipeline it, like pump it up a little bit. Um, that's in the best situation. This is expensive, but it actually has the best hopes of survival. So 
anything that's worthwhile usually is expensive. Um, needs incentives for local people to work though. So one problem is animals are too used to humans. This one here is probably one of the most crucial. Make it, you got to throw like some money into it to make it like uh, people have a vested interest in this animal or plant surviving in their habitat, local people. Um, hey, one problem is animals are too used to humans. So if you're raised in a zoo and be like, oh yeah, it's a human who gives me food. Okay, I'm off in the wild. I can't really get food. Oh, there's a human. Let me just go up to him. All right. I, I think zoo animals kind of look at us as um, snack machines, you know? Throw the, you know, non-believing flag at me if you want, but you know, hey, it's my thought. Upon being replanted outside, plants can be outcompeted by other plants or eaten. Yeah, man, if you're just trying to out there, trying to get back into your habitat, and you got forced out initially by some pine trees, guess what? Those pine trees are still there looking to suppress you. So botanical gardens and seed banks are basically zoos for plants. Yeah. All right. Seed banks uh, are seeds where seeds are stored. They're big time. Remember the American chestnut up above? We're bringing it back, baby. Oh, yeah, because we stored the seeds in a seed bank. Yep. They put these all over the world um, as kind of an insurance policy because if one seed bank gets demolished by a natural disaster, that way it doesn't get rid of all your seeds. Um, basically, in case speed plant out. Seed banks are in different locations in case of a natural disaster. They've got a big one in Svalbard right now, but I think it's under um, some problems because of like global warming with like permafrost melting. All right, kind of sad. Uh, flagship species, the species that peeps recognize and love. All right, everybody loves a panda. Yep. Hey, save the whales. They're huge. They don't really impact me too much in that I'm not gonna hit one with my car, um, but yes. They're cool looking, save them, you know, um, generate sympathy for the cause and money for the cause as well. That's where like flagship species are really good. Uh, the disadvantages are looks bad if they go extinct. If you're like, save the pandas, and then you watch the last one just kind of die. Oh, it's like watching a sad ending to a movie. Um, or like actually probably more, more correctly, it's like watching a dog in a movie. You know, the dog's going to get it. You know, take priority over other species, which may be more endangered. So we got these ones we really should be focusing on, but the pandas kind of give us, bring us in the money. So yeah, pump up the pandas, save the pandas. No one even knows what these ones are about anyway. All right. Um, uh, maybe a threat to human interests. So yeah, if you're like save the tigers and in India, they're like, my son just got eaten by a tiger. Or mauled, they're not going to be too into saving the tigers. Um, define a keystone species for me. Yep. Some species have a bigger impact than others, man. They just do. So you take away that species, and the whole house comes, or the whole arch comes just falling down. Um, biomass doesn't matter. It could be, you know, like buffalo on the plains. It could be wildebeest in the Sahara, which are both big, by the way. It could be elephants. Or it could be shrimp in the ocean. Just this little shrimp, you know. Um, but, so biomass, the size doesn't matter. Disappearance badly messes up the entire ecosystem. Once they're gone, oh, Jesus. Other species start dropping like flies. So how are sea otters a keystone species in a kelp forest? This will take you a little bit to look up. How are beavers a keystone species in New England, right? How are elephants in the, in the savannah a keystone species? Yeah, sorry, peeps. Those are going to take you a little while to, to get. Habitat conservation. Designing protected areas. Just like when you buy a house, location matters the most. So for habitat conservation... Where you put your preserves, where you put your conserved lands matters. Um, away from urban areas is generally a better idea. So the less human contact you have, the more that land is going to be really good. 
away from her. Um, unfortunately, a lot of early protected area was on land that nobody wanted. So they were like, all right, you got desert land, this wasteland. Oh, yeah, put a conservation park there. Well, what's it going to conserve? It looks like it's got three crickets there. Yeah, man. All right. Um, questions that conservationists ask when planting protected areas, when planting protected areas. How large should it be to protect species? You know, how big of an area do you need? Lions need quite a bit of range. Are there species in the middle of a preserve that need protection? Yep. Um, better to have one large reserve or a bunch of smaller ones. <laughs> What about the edge effects? The edge is like right along the outer part of the preserve. Um, think of it like this. This is horrible to say. It, deer like actually thrive along the edge of the forest because they can go off into your cornfield, eat your bird feeder, stuff like that. You know, I know we all want to think that Bambi lives in the middle of the forest. For my buddies that hunt. They tend to tell you that Bambi lives on the edge of the forest. So, hey, just a different viewpoint. Um, yeah, all right. How many individuals of an endangered species must be protected? All right. Are they, how endangered are they? What's the best shape for the preserve? Ooh, is it long? Is it round? Is it tons of little ones? Is it square? All right. Is it different in elevation? All right. Does like some birds are low elevation, other birds high. Um, if there are several reserves, how sh close should they be to each other? All right. You want genetic diversity. You don't want inbred animals. Should they be joined by corridors or separated? Um, animal highway. Corridor crossing. All right, let's look at image. Yeah, like something like this right here, something like that right there, something like that there, something like that there. Allows the animals to cross. So, um, sloth, single, large, or several small. You see what they did there? S L O S S. Oh, yeah. Both educate and and conservation. So depends on species for which is better, a large one or several small. Um, small is better than nothing. So yeah, you know, define ecotones. Uh, let's see if I can help you out with this one. All right, define ecotones. All right, all, haha. Uh -huh. Here you go. All right, um, if you can read that down there. So um more species in ecotones because of increased predation plus compet competition long thin preserves like greenways and river parks have large edge effect circular preserves like yellowstone park have the least edge effect corridor equals a thin strip of land that connects preserves so yeah just like that picture we showed you um some reserves have a buffer zone where farming, logging, et cetera, is allowed, but not in the interior. Big National Park, Baxter National, no, sorry, State Park up in Maine. It's huge. That has this where they allow logging on the outside of the park, uh, or the edges, I believe, but not on the interior, which is kind of crazy because they kind of say that the park should be left like the way it was since humanity, and they only allow humans in there for six months of the year but they'll allow logging trucks. So, um, hey, see what works. All right, single large versus several small. Single large has high number of animals in different species. You gotta take this down, by the way. Has less boundary area, so less edge effect. Yep, less edge when you're a single large. Um, more habitat for more species. Several small, greater range in diversity of habitats because you're going like out like that. More population of rare species, less likely for total destruction um, from human-made disasters. So diversity, all right? Yep, and uh, peeps, that's it. Three, four, bang, done.